Okay, so Hero Area is coming out in probably less than a 12 hours in some regions and with this I'm making a guide on it. So first of all, I'll discuss what it even is, uh, how you can access it. After that, I'll explain all of the advantages, disadvantages of various elements, regions and stuff like that. I'll cover the uh, various mobs that roam around the area and the drops that you can get. So basically the wars that you can get. And uh, later I'll talk about the quests and how to maximize the rewards from your quests. After that, uh, I will be making a five part series on each region, meaning that since the hero area is pretty much uh, consists of five regions uh, similar to the story mode, I will be covering on how to counter each of the mini bosses that you can see right here. So uh, the four in the Rudlin area and the three in the other four areas at the bottom. I will be giving you some free to play teams, uh, so something that you can pretty much easily build with obtainable units or there will be one net 5 that I use which is Bastet, but since pretty much everyone has Bastet by now after the event, I feel like she will be a great addition to that team. And yeah, uh, make sure to stay tuned for that as I will upload those videos probably either today or tomorrow early on. So yeah, make sure to not miss those. And yeah, let's start with the Hero Area Guide itself. So first of all, what it even is. So Hero Area is basically the same five regions that you have been doing through story mode, but uh, it contains way harder mobs. It has various mini bosses. It has an elite boss, uh, which is the Baphomet. And uh, you have various conditions for each uh, region. You have various drops for it. To access this dungeon, uh, you will need to meet two requirements. So first of all, uh, you will need to do an area exploration quest, which is in the Castline region and pretty much at the very bottom. It's called World of Fisher. Uh, I believe it will require you to complete the full story mode, at least like Act 5, uh, Chapter 46 or something like that. And uh, you will also need to have a summoner at level 60 or above, meaning that uh, if you have one at level 60 and another at 59, the summoner with the level 60 will be able to complete this quest. Uh, the one with the 59 uh, will unfortunately not be able to access the hero area. And this quest will quickly explain on how each of the areas work. And basically in the first one, you just talk with the NPCs and for the rest five, uh, you just go talking through each region and talking about uh, those regions. Really, you can complete this on order without any fighting or anything like that and it won't take more than a few minutes. Okay, so for the areas themselves, I already mentioned that there are five in total and they correspond to each of the story regions that you have been in. For example, currently I'm in Tesca and as you can see, I'm fighting higher level mobs in here. I do have sort of a safer team because the mobs are pretty hard compared to the regular story mission. And it also has uh, different book entries for each of the mobs. So uh, if you go to the creature collection and as you can see here are the main five regions and you will also have the hero area which basically corresponds to the hero monsters and you can check all of the skills of all of the units in here. Okay, and now here's the main thing you need to know about each area. So each of the continents will have one uh, specific element that has a lot of benefit over others. So uh, you can find it in the area effect right here. So for example, in Tesca right now, uh, since the mobs are fire element, uh, this area has an area effect of increases all damage dealt by monsters of water element by 200%, meaning that the damage will basically be tripled. And uh, they will also reduce uh, the damage taken by 35% for all water attribute units. This means that whenever you enter the area, uh, you should try to match the area effect that is of that area. So for example, in Tesca, you really want to be running water units, units, especially if they are either squishy, meaning that they will benefit a lot from the damage being reduced, or if they do a lot of damage because uh, big damage being tripled will just completely boost your effect. As you can see, I'm running a team of a Galleon, which is my attack buffer and defense breaker. I'm running a sustain unit because without sustain, you will have a very hard time in this uh, scenario. And I'm running a water damage unit. I'm also running a summoner element that is water and you should change it because it affects the summoner as well. 
can see someone is also afk farming with pretty much of all water monsters as well you can see uh the water summoner ariel camilla and uh nadinha so basically if you run water here you will be doing a lot more damage compared to any other element and pretty much here are the uh, beneficial elements so for the middle tree so for tesca it's water for aya it's fire and for florence it's wind uh, these are pretty self-explanatory because these elements do counter the mob element that is in that region as you know florence is a uh, mobs with water elements so wind is super useful there aya is mobs of wind elements or so fire is useful there and tesca has fire mobs which uh where water is the most useful now rudlin and rokorangma are a tiny bit different so in Rudlin, a light uh, element is beneficial, however, it will be a bit harder to get units of light elements since, of course, those scrolls are there and it's pretty difficult to get even some nat 3 units. So, uh, for this area, uh, if you are able to do light element, do it. If not, uh, you can opt out for the wind element because the mobs in this uh, area are of uh, water elements so wind, you, wind element mobs uh, will have a slight advantage over uh, the monsters in here and for Rokorangma is uh, pretty similar uh, it says that the dark element has an advantage but uh, you may be struggling to get a lot of dark mobs so uh, if you are not able to build a team with dark mobs uh, you can also opt out for water units because the monsters in this area are a mix of i believe light and fire so uh, water elements will have a slight advantage over most of the mobs there and now for the drops so first of all the regular mobs that you hunt on the field uh, will drop two items so uh, first one will be gold as you can see i got 115 from one of the mobs and the second thing will be these magical room pieces they'll come in stacks of like 10 to 20 and uh, they're not a 100% drop, some of the mobs may not drop it, but they are pretty common uh, to stack up on quite a bit of it. Then uh, there will be the mini bosses, so uh, as you can see, every pretty much every mob in this uh, boss menu except for the Baphomet. So uh, these are elite mini bosses and these ones will have way better drops, so first of all, uh, on top of dropping a gold and magical rune pieces, they will also drop a legendary rune. So each mini boss will drop one rune, and meaning that if you beat the boss on solo, uh, you will be guaranteed to get the rune. However, if you're beating it with a party of three, for example, only one rune will be dropped and uh, it will be given to a random member of that party. So it is sort of beneficial to farm solo if you really want to get a guaranteed drop but of course farming in a team is usually faster so you just have to uh, sort of see which way you are able to farm faster uh, for these elite mini bosses they also drop uh, these fire and gravestones and well the element does matter it's just and gravestones in general these are used for crafting runes however don't put too much focus on them they're definitely not needed to uh, progress in the game they're just a nice addition to craft a specific rune that you may want and uh, the last drop will also be the tough leather and this one is used for crafting several outfits there are currently three outfits for the hero area two of them require only tough leathers and one of them will require the altered leather as well so uh, make sure to farm quite a few of these mini bosses if possible because uh, these will be super useful for crafting uh, some decent uh, outfits and now for the Baphomet uh, the Baphomet is a boss in every region and uh, the drops of it are pretty similar so on top of everything that the elite mini bosses drops uh, you do get another drop added and it will be the altered leather and this one is used for one specific uh, outfit set however that outfit is insanely OP in PvP so if you do plan on doing PvP make sure to uh, rush on this set because uh, later on you may even have trouble finding players to do Baphomet with so yeah uh, this one is super useful and you should definitely uh, farm Baphomet for it I think you need like 15 or so uh, Altair Leathers for the full set so yeah make sure to uh, grab some of those and the last thing I want to touch upon are the quests so these quests will reset weekly and here are the rewards that you can get so the first quest will be killing 90 mobs and this is probably the easiest quest it's just the mobs that you can find randomly on the field 
you will select the quest and it will just patch you through uh, all three mobs until uh, you basically kill enough of them to complete the quest and you will get 80k gold, 6000 rune pieces and 25 engraved stones. The second one will be killing each midi boss one time, so as you can see uh, pretty much these three and once you kill them once uh, you will be getting 100,000 gold. And uh, the last quest will be killing the Baphomet uh, and this one will uh, reward you with 25 engraved stones. So four quests, uh, what you need to know is the first one you should try to do uh, every time when possible because first of all it will be super easy to do, you can do it completely on order, you just select the quest and it will be done after a certain amount of time. The second one, uh, when possible I do recommend completing it, especially on your main summoner because that gold will be proven useful, however I know that especially if you're trying to complete it on a summoner that you don't play on, uh, soloing these mini bosses will be a bit difficult and you may need a party for it. But if you are able to get a consistent party that can clear these mini bosses decently fast, you shouldn't have trouble completing all of the quests uh, here. And for the Baphomet one, uh, really I would recommend not stressing this quest. If you are able to complete it, whatever. If not, uh, the reward like these engraved stones are definitely nothing too important and you're not missing out on anything if you are not completing these quests uh, once or twice uh, per week. And another amazing thing about these quests, and if you've watched some of my previous videos you will already know it, is you can complete these quests separately on each summoner, meaning that currently uh, the quests you see here are for my cleave summoner because I'm playing on it. If I switch to a different summoner I will actually get a separate uh, quest. Uh, the quest will be the same, but uh, you will be able to complete it once more, so for example this one uh, is super easy to complete on each summoner because uh, the mobs here don't really do that much damage and you can simply rely on the mobs that you have uh, to easily complete it. So uh, what I recommend is leveling every summoner to level 60 at least and uh, making sure that you do at least the first quest uh, each week. For the second and third ones uh, I would say I do highly recommend doing this quest uh, on your main summoner because it will be the easiest and some of these mini bosses you will actually be able to solo early on. But if you're not able to do the second or the third quest, definitely do not stress it. Yes, uh, you may be missing out on a bit of gold, however it should not impact your progress too much because it's just gold and that goal will pretty much just advance you in professions and if you delay the profession by a week or something, definitely will not be too impactful to your game. So yeah, just to uh, reiterate, make sure to do the first quest on every summoner, uh, second if possible, and third one, uh, feel free to skip as the reward is definitely nothing special. And yeah, that's about it for the uh, first part of this video. Uh, now, uh, after a few hours or maybe even tomorrow, I will upload a guide, a five part guide on how to counter each mini boss with the free to play team, so if you are interested in that, make sure to drop a sub as uh, you will be able to not miss that video. I will counter each region and basically explain on how each of the mini bosses works and what units you should be looking to using in order to uh, counter them pretty easily uh, with pretty much free to play teams. And yeah, that's about it and I'll see you soon.